Hello friends, last time we spoke about four things that differentiate a small company from that which is a big large corporation. These four things are strategy, execution, human resource and leadership. We spoke in detail about the first part of this four things which is strategy. Today we are going to be talking about the second one and that is execution. My name is Hardik Harsora and I am your management consultant helping your company propel. Keep watching this video right till the end to make sure you take full advantage. Welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about execution which is point 2 that differentiates a small company from that which is a large one. Execution is your ability to put into action anything that you do in your business. In my opinion, superlative execution ability requires three things. Number one, systems and processes. Number two, monitoring. Number three, change management. Let's talk about all of these things in a little more detail. So point number one, processes and systems. My dear friend, when I say processes, I mean step by step ways of doing anything that you do in your business. And those step by step ways help anybody understand very clearly what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. It also facilitates passing of information from one department to another department so smoothly that there is no finger pointing, you know, where one employee tells the other one, he didn't inform me, so I couldn't do my job. Those processes and systems must be created keeping in mind the kind of people that you have in your organization. And that's how you grow to a bigger company. Obviously, processes and systems have a lot of benefits. Number one benefit is it helps you scale, which means you can make your organization multiply very easily. Let me give you an example. Uh, you all have gone to McDonald's. You all have also gone to various other food joints that are uh, that operate like a chain. You know, all of these food food joints that operate a chain, they are able to do that simply because of wonderful and superlative processes and systems. Imagine if they didn't have the process and they were depending on that one man chef or one man army, you know, who's, who's the brilliant chef and it's that chef who says, it's because of me why the food is the way it is, they would never have grown to so many outlets. They would then require similar chefs every time they had to multiply. But McDonald's or any other company uh, which, which is into the food chain business has not done that. They have created systems and processes. If you create systems and processes, you can multiply your operations and handle a larger volume with ease. The second benefit of having systems and processes is the ability to provide consistently good products. When you provide a product which is consistently good on let's say a particular feature, then you, your brand name becomes synonym to that feature. It's like saying every time I have a french fries in McDonald's, I know that it's going to be crispy to this extent. You know, we in India also have some wafer companies, you know, who say you can't have just one because they or they talk about, you know, the noise that it makes, you know, when the wafer like kind of chips in and that is consistency and they are able to provide these products only because of process. Process is what makes the output consistent. If it's dependent on human, he will have his emotions, he will have so many factors impacting the way he will conduct. Uh, himself in the business and therefore the output. Not only does it help you scale, it will also help you find the right resources, human resources. You know why? Because when you have systems and processes, you only need people who can operate on that system and make that system work. As long as they have the skills to make the system work, the output is going to be right. So if I, if I have to cook, God forbid, if that day comes ever, I will, be, I will be extremely hungry and I will probably starve by death. 
But if I have a system, you know, which tells me you need to put, uh, let's say, one spoon of whatever and two spoons of whatever, and the spoon is measured, and then you got to boil it at, you know, it automatically boils it at a certain temperature, and and two minutes down the line you have your food ready. I can also cook, you know, and that can make me feel better. Now, if that is what is required, then you require a minimum skilled guy to operate on your systems to produce the output, which technically means your recruitment becomes easy because a minimum skilled guy is always available. It is the experts that are difficult to hire. Point number two, monitoring. Now, this is extremely important. Imagine that you are a parent, your company is a child and processes is like clothes that you make your child wear. You know, obviously your child is a, a living being and it's going to grow. So you can't give the child the same clothes that you gave the child at the age of three. Also, when he grows up to become a 13, you can't, right? It won't fit him. In the same way, the processes also need to be monitored and as the organization grow, they need to be changed. Now the question is, what do you monitor? How do you monitor? So let me give you an example. Let's say you are doing a sales process, okay? And your sales process is with, designed with the aim to make sure you are able to conduct a lot of sales. Now, all of you measure what sales was done but a lot of you may probably miss out on another factor which is if you have a target of sales let's say 1 lakh rupees i don't know how many people gave you that 1 lakh rupees was it was there just one customer who gave you 1 lakh or were there 10 15 customers that gave you 1 lakh if it is 10 15 customers giving you 1 lakh you are in a better position because you're not giving all your you're not leaving all your eggs in one basket and that's a better position to be in now, if that is what you want to measure, then it is penetration. If your sales process is designed keeping in view these, these two kind of measurements, one is sales, which is productivity measurement, and the other is penetration, which is efficiency measurement. If you have these measurements, and if you keep monitoring these measurements, you will know when the targets are not achieved anymore. And when the target are not achieved anymore, that's the time to re-engineer your process. So you must monitor these processes. Just designing won't really help. Number three, you got to be Superman when it comes to change management. Remember guys, when you do not have processes and you are introducing processes, it's a change for your people. Now, once you have these processes, your questions are going to be different because you are going to be looking at data and then asking those questions. Now, those kind of questions is going to be another change for your people. They are not used to you asking such sharp questions because now you know what is happening. Earlier, you probably depended on the stories that they give you. That's a change. The third thing that you will do is when you monitor your processes and you re-engineer them, that's another change. So technically, you are putting yourself and the entire team in a plethora of changes and change nobody likes unless obviously you are changing clothes because you want to look good and that change is superb. So when it comes to change management, you got to figure out how you are going to manage this by motivating people or by penalizing them or doing a mix of both. What you got to remember is when you handle change, you don't have to drop the ball and say, hey, you know what, let's not do processes because they are too cumbersome. Remember why you started on this journey. You started on this journey to become the large corporation that you really want to become. I have a video that I had done on how to consistently you know, carry on with your goal and not give up. I'm going to leave a link of that video. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you will have the link coming up somewhere here. If you're watching it on Facebook, you will have the link coming up in the description box. Click on that link and do visit that video and have a look at that too. People, there are several ways in which systems and processes can be designed. GE, which we all know is a very successful company, used Six Sigma. Toyota, which is again a very successful company, developed their own process and systems. They call it TPS, Toyota Production System. There are several others like Lean, Kaizen, TQM, and something that's very well known for at least the Indian market, ISO. 
Now, you don't really need to implement all of these systems and frameworks that you hear. Don't get scared for it. Just go about creating step-by-step -step methods to conduct anything in your business and that's good enough as a starter. Remember friends, knowing is not enough. Doing is and as long as you're doing something and taking that first step, it is going to be better than doing nothing at all. Let me help you in your first step of doing as well. I'm going to drop a small link in the description box. You can click on that link. It will have a series of questions that will open up your mind to what are the kind of processes you need to have. Now, if you and start designing those processes, if you have questions on how to go about those processes, maybe you can drop a comment and I will attempt to respond to as much as I can. Obviously, processes can be very detailed, but I will give it to my best shot if you put a comment and take that effort. With that being said, if you like this video, do hit a thumbs up, do comment like I already said, and yes, do share these videos with your friends, colleagues, families or anybody that you know is in the business and would like to uh, you know, get knowledge on similar issues. Remember friends, when you share this knowledge, it could be your vendors, suppliers, anybody in your business ecosystem, they improve. When they improve, the benefit automatically comes to you because you are interacting with a far more systematic business than you would be doing earlier. So with that thought, keep watching these videos, keep sharing, keep putting comments. I'll be happy to hear from you. Keep growing, keep propelling.